look at the eyes of all the senators on this house, Mr. Speaker, and reflect with that statement that to you, Mr. Speaker, today, to my brothers and sisters who are senators of this house, would it have mattered for Kenya that you lived? And I want to extend that same framing to the president and the deputy president of this country and ask, would it have mattered that they lived? Because when this particular conflict started, Mr. Speaker, there are people who have taken personal stance. And indeed, these issues are personal. They are personal because when young people talk about going without food, it is personal. They are personal because when women in this country go without medicine in hospitals in the country, they are personal. Mr. Speaker, last week when we were reflecting here, and the Senator of Nairobi, Senator Sifuna, came and talked about the possibility of him having a card for expressway that has 377,000. I imagined what happens to villages that people like Senator Meth or Senator Murango comes from, where we have got dispensaries and hospitals that you will find that they have got ambulances that don't have fuel in those ambulances. And the people in this country, Mr. Speaker, are losing lives for simple reason. They could not be able to get a fuel ambulance. Mr. Speaker, what is happening to my country today is so sad that it made me reflect in my personal life and my personal journey here. And I wanted, Mr. President, us as members of parliament, to also reflect on our journey personally to where we are today. Because sometimes it's easy to forget. that, And then we might end up seeing this notion called Gen Z's as just some young people who are protesting in the streets without having homes where they come from. And within those homes, they have got burdens that they are experiencing, that they are facing, that we might be far removed from. So that even when people are talking about dialogue, we might not be dialoguing about the real issues. Mr. Speaker, in 2003, February the 3rd, my mother got sick in the village. Now, in the village where I come from, Mr. Speaker, we used to be tobacco farmers. And as tobacco farmers, Mr. Speaker, when you don't have the capacity to be able to grow tobacco in your own way and be able to have a number from a company that is called BAT at that time, then you end up depending on somebody else who has got more capacity than you. Now, it happened that my family did not have the capacity to be able to grow our own tobacco, Mr. Speaker, so that we were working in what was called then a gook to one gentleman that I will still owe a lot of respect to called Joshua Tieno. He was, the, he was seen as the most successful farmer in our village, Mr. Speaker, because one of the biggest assets that he owned was a bicycle, Mr. Speaker. At that time, my brothers, when we talk about the issue of education, my brothers and sisters in the village at that time were suffering outside our village to be able to get an education. So I found myself as the oldest son and, daughter, and, and, son and, and with my, my sisters, the daughters of my mother, in the village at that time. My mother got sick and my dad was not in the village as well. He had gone to also seek for a way of supporting the family, Mr. Speaker. When my mother got sick, Mr. Speaker, as young as I was, I did not know how to even ride a bicycle. So I went to Joshua Tieno, who used to be the person who could help us with his bicycle and told him, help me with your bicycle, I try and get my mother to the hospital. Of course, I could not be able to ride that bicycle, but I carried my mother to the hospital, and between the third and the 12th of that month, Mr. Speaker, I depended on Joshua's bicycle to take my mother to the hospital. She was there to be diagnosed with what they called chronic malaria. And on 12th in the morning, when we went to the hospital, the doctor told me that your mother cannot be treated here because this chronic malaria can only be treated in referral hospital in Migori town. We have the ambulance, but we don't have fuel. Can you be able to go and look for 2,000 shillings so you can take your mother to Migori District Hospital? Of course, I went home, 
I found my father. When he got home, we didn't have the 2,000 shillings, Mr. Speaker. I will never forget that image that at 11.48 p.m., I lost my mother. I lost my mother to a simple disease called chronic malaria. And I lost my mother because when we were in the village, getting an ambulance to be fueled was a problem, Mr. Speaker. Today, as we talk about Gen Z's, some people might see those young people as just people who are crazy and on TikTok and on Facebook and on all these social media spaces, Mr. Speaker. But if you sit with those young people, Mr. Speaker, you will hear of stories that mine could be the most little story of them all, Mr. Speaker. These are stories of young people who have gone to school, come back home, they find their own siblings who they might call millennials or otherwise any generation, Mr. Speaker, who have gone to school, qualified in schools, and cannot be able to make sense of life, Mr. Speaker. You go to these young people's houses, yes, some of them might be successful because their parents are successful. But most of them, Mr. Speaker, if you look at their lives, Mr. Speaker, they are everything to their parents. They are the only hope that their, their parents have. Mr. Speaker, we might be in this house and we must be privileged to be able to get insurance. But for some of these young people, they are the insurance for their parents. I can tell you for a fact, I've heard members of this house, that even themselves, when they're in this house, they're the pension for their parents. Their parents do not have anywhere they could be able to build. They are the insurance when their parents are sick. They send their parents medicine at home. And therefore, as we reflect now, Mr. Speaker, one thing that we as a house must acknowledge, and we want to extend this to the, to the president of this country, Mr. Speaker, is then what is the root cause of what we are seeing in the street today in Kenya? The root cause, we know it very well, is economic emptiness and lack of income and jobs for young people in this country, and they are the bulk and majority of this country, Mr. Speaker, and they cannot get income and decent jobs, Mr. Speaker, simply because we have enabled a system where governance in this country cannot allow for capital to reach those young people, Mr. Speaker. We know that in this house, we are supposed to be the oversight authority over what is happening in ministries that all my colleagues, including Metu, just right now, spoke about ministries mishandling resources in this country, Mr. Speaker. And we know that even as we try to struggle as much as possible as a country, Mr. Speaker, there is no way government can be able to create adequate jobs for these young people. Adequate jobs can only be created together with adequate income and decent and dignified livelihoods can only be created, Mr. Speaker, when we allow the private sector of this country, Mr. Speaker, to be able to expand and grow. But Mr. Speaker, what's happening in this country, as a young person who has come to this parliament, what is happening in this country is that we have got serious vested interest in government and governance of this country. So that there is a conspiracy between the executive of this country and the parliament of this country that when budgets are being done, when finance bills are being done, leaders are conspiring so that they can be able to do business in the budget and backbone of this country, Mr. Speaker. If there is any solution that is needed in this country, Mr. Speaker, the first that I expect the President to do is actually to audit all the companies in the registrar of companies so that we know who are doing business in this country that are making it impossible for young people in this country to be able to do business. And Mr. Speaker, if that audit is done, you will see a clear path and a clear well-crafted path for people in this country to create a country of state-made Kenyans versus self-made Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, where state-made Kenyans are very deliberate about putting into budget money into this, in, in this country that does not even go to the private sector, that only enables people in politics and people in government to be able to accumulate wealth through dubious means and projects that are never done, Mr. Speaker, in all the budgets that we are, we are discussing, Mr. Speaker. As we speak right now, Mr. Speaker, 
we saw in the last government under the current president when he was a deputy president as a speaker we saw the passing of what we call GAA the government advertisement agencies mr speaker now government advertisement agency made the government to be a particular player and not a regulator in the industry of advertisement in this industry mr speaker where young people can be able to get most jobs in this country mr speaker because of the uh, height of what we call technology and digital understanding mr speaker is on digital marketing and mr speaker the government is running a lot of money that goes in the pocket of individuals in GAA deals to the extent, Mr. Speaker, that today, even if you look at the mainstream media, Mr. Speaker, and advertisement agents in this country, Mr. Speaker, they are collapsing because GAA owes them tons of money that people have paid to themselves, and it's not possible for young people to be able to get, get those opportunities. If you look, Mr. Speaker, for instance, national media is going to fire actually has fired 180 young people. And yes, GAA owes national media 3 billion, Mr. Speaker. If you look at standard, Mr. Speaker, where young people have been, have been nurtured to the extent that they can be elite digital advertisers, Mr. Speaker, you will find that in standard for the last almost seven months, Mr. Speaker, I've got young people there, they interview us every day. If you go to Vibes Radio, they interview us. If you go to Spice FM, young people there interview us. If you go to the mainstream TV station, young people interview us, Mr. Speaker. For seven months, they have not even been paid 5,000 shillings, Mr. Speaker, because they go without money, because GAA owes the money that has been paid under the watch of Parliament and under the watch of the entire Cabinet, Mr. Speaker. I can go on and on and show you about two billion that you see GAA owing the entire media space where young people and creatives should be excelling, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, Mr. Speaker, my heart was pouring out because I saw interns sleeping outside Afia House, Mr. Speaker. In this house, we have enabled the passing of Shif in this house, Mr. Speaker. And if you look at the way NHIF used to work, Mr. Speaker, you can see how Parliament and the Cabinet have conspired against Kenyans, Mr. Speaker, to do businesses. You know very well that when we did have the national, uh, I mean the, NIV, uh, the, the, the NHIF that was working, Mr. Speaker, it used to be that money would be collected from the public, NHIF would then go and have a department that makes payments for all Kenyans when they are sick. That even necessitated the fact that NHIF had to have a system of clearing those payments, Mr. Speaker. And yet, in these two houses, Mr. Speaker, of Parliament, we passed SHIF. How is SHIF operating, Mr. Speaker? Where NHIF used to have 25, I mean 24 billion that was saved, Mr. Speaker, to the extent that they could be able to buy t bills so that when they don't collect money, they could be able to pay for people in this country, Mr. Speaker. Today, that entire 24 billion is missing, Mr. Speaker. And to the extent that we know very well, and the, I hope the Senator of Masabit is here, that SHIF was forced to go and procure a system that they don't need because they procured uh, services of a private entity to be able to offer, offer insurance. SHIF still went and spent 10 billion to procure a system that they don't need that failed when it was stated in Masabit, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this is a matter of public knowledge. And all these are deals and businesses so that even Parliament has become a place of not bill making but deal making, Mr. Speaker. So we must face these challenges as, as a people, Mr. Speaker. And one thing that the President must be able to confront, Mr. Speaker, is that this vested interest in government must stop and allow for private sector to be able to create jobs that are decent for young people because government will just never be able to create enough jobs. And this is confronting the president of the nation that because of the magnitude of the crisis that we are seeing today, Mr. Speaker, the response must also be the same. It goes without saying that in physics, they say that one action must have an equal reaction to it, Mr. Speaker. It cannot be that we are going to talk about just dialogues 
for the sake of dialogue, Mr. Speaker, this dialogue must be on specific issues that are denying young people economic opportunities in this country so that those issues are sorted for once and for all. And at the heart of those issues, Mr. Speaker, is the ministers or cabinet secretaries that we have in this country today. Mr. Speaker, the president must confront this reality that either you die with these few individuals or you die with the entire country. It must matter to the president to be able to give young people an explanation why is it so difficult, at least in areas where ministers who are extremely, extremely known in the country to have done economic crimes to leave cabinet, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what is, it, what, what is there, Mr. Speaker, to explain to the country why the CS of agriculture must continue being a CS, Mr. Speaker? And Mr. Speaker, this must come all the way to the House so that the issue we have been fighting in this House on separation of powers, whereby we need Parliament to be able to play an oversight role and have a proper autonomous and independence operation between it and the executive, must also happen, Mr. Speaker. And one of the radical ways that the President can be able to help this country is to rethink the entire leadership of the National Assembly in particular, Mr. Speaker. Because the National Assembly and our Constitution has got all powers to deal with money bills, Mr. Speaker. And that is why it becomes very easy for the National Assembly to be able to mix personal interest and public interest, Mr. Speaker. I have checked at the quality of leadership in this House, Mr. Speaker. If you look at Senior Senator Boni Alwale, Mr. Speaker, as the majority whip in this House, Mr. Speaker, at what point do you compare Senior Boni Alwale with Honorable Osoro in the National Assembly, where Honorable Osoro is going to look at issues of budget and finance bills in this country, Mr. Speaker. When you look at our majority leader here, Mr. Speaker, the gentleman called Arun Chiriot, who has actually brought this bill, Mr. Speaker, the depth and the passion for the country, Mr. Speaker, at what point do you compare Arun Chiriot with Kimani Chungwa in National Assembly and then say that we will assemble so sober assembly, Mr. Speaker? When you look at People like Deputy Majority Leader, Mr. Speaker, Sarah, Sarah Tabitha Kerochi, a lady of valor and towering spirit of entrepreneurship, Mr. Speaker, who has run serious business as we have seen in this country, Mr. Speaker. At what point, Mr. Speaker, do you compare? I, I'm, I, I'm even lost of words, Mr. Speaker. I'm lost of words, Mr. Speaker. The, the president must confront this reality. We must see as young people a shake-up in National Assembly that has basically enabled 100% of the problem of not listening to the young people of this country, Mr. Speaker. And we must see that shake up also, Mr. Speaker, in the... Two minutes to wind up your thoughts. Mr. Speaker, as I wind up, as I wind up, I also want to invite Gen Z's to a conversation that we are a constitutional democracy. The country must run. The country must be governed. Do not be tempted that in the foot of this wonderful movement that you have had, then you get compromised in traditional politics where people can end up hijacking this kind of movement for popularity's sake and make it either tribal or just pure popularity, Mr. Speaker. I've seen you vilify the president alone, but you should know that now under our constitution, we have got the presidency. The president is not the only person who is liable. Even the deputy president is liable and must also be called to order, Mr. Speaker. It is the deputy president of this country who first saw the people of this country, not as people, but as goods and services, Mr. Speaker. He saw the people of this country as commodities and made us a country that was made to be believed to be a company not a country, Mr. Speaker. And he saw us as Rabuon, Mr. Speaker. He saw us as Mogoka. He saw us as uh, Waru. He saw us as Omena, Mr. Speaker. And now, the commodities are speaking. He must know. The commodities are speaking. The Rabuon have started speaking. The Omena have started speaking. And he must now realize that this country is not, is not a company where we talk about shareholding and state-made Kenyans versus self-made Kenyans, but we are a country of people of value, and even him must be held to account 
so that we do not start a place whereby people want to start fighting Kikuyus the other side or fighting Somalis this other side because all those people are also a part of the recipe of why this country works because I've lived Senator Abbas Thank you Honorable Speaker Honorable Speaker I want to join my colleagues also um, to discuss the situation in the country and first and foremost I want to send my heartfelt condolences to all the families and wish them solace in their own hearts. And for those who are injured, I wish them a quick recovery. Unfortunately, whatever has happened in this country in a very short time has given, shown me and really made me to have a very heavy heart. Honorable Speaker, for those of us who live in the borderlands, we know much about what happens in our neighborhoods. You have seen what happened in Somalia, 